So let's talk about what reactivity is first, in case you're not familiar with the concept of reactivity itself. Uh, There's a simple piece of code here. Um, it logs x twice. So yeah, it, it will log 30 both of the times. When, when we say something is reactive, it means that the, the side effects to changes that you make. So in this case, when j gets updated, because x is inherently dependent on j, it will cause a side effect and j, the value of j should also update. So it should be something like this, where uh, after the value of j got updated, even x should update and it should become 40. Hey everyone, good evening. Um, so today I'll be giving you folks a short presentation of how you build reactive systems using proxies and reflects, which are like built-in metaprogramming utilities that JavaScript provides. Uh, so let's get started a bit about me before we start. I'm Yash Dave. Uh, I work in part of like the product engineering team at BeatSource. Big key mechanical keyboard enthusiast. We have a bunch of them. Uh, usually you will find me playing Rocket League or Apex Legends games. You can find me on GitHub as Amorphius, pretty much on most social media platforms. GitHub, Twitter, my own website, amorphius.dev. But yeah, let's, let's get started. Um, so let's talk about what reactivity is first, in case you're not familiar with the concept of reactivity itself. Uh, There's a simple piece of code here. Um, it logs x twice. Uh, so just a question, what, what will be the output for this. So yeah, it, it will log 30 both of the times. But uh, let's say if, there was, if this was a reactive piece of code, right? When, when we say something is reactive, it means that the, the side effects to changes that you make. So in this case, when j gets updated, because x is inherently dependent on j, it will cause a side effect and j, the value of j should also update. So it should be something like this, where uh, after the value of j got updated, even x should update and it should become 40. That, that is like reactivity in a nutshell. You react to a change. So what to do then? How do we get reactivity in here? Um, JavaScript, unfortunately, doesn't provide any ways to see when an object is returned to or a read from. So we have to use uh, some things around it. There are two uh, general ways that uh, are like used by multiple frameworks. View itself does it in two ways. It, ha it either uses getters and setters for an object, so it will define an object, it will define a getter and setter for it, and when you assign a value to that variable, it, it assigns the value to a property inside the object, and this is what refs are in view three. Uh, nothing to sweat about if you don't know view, it, a lot of it is la framework agnostic. Uh, coming to next is proxies. Proxies are a new spec, a new utility that was included that was introduced in ES 2015. Where how what a proxy will do for you is it will allow you to create a copy or a replacement for an object. But the benefit of this is you can define how you want to do basic operations like getting, setting, having its inbuilt properties. You can customize them. You can set your own over there. So this. How to initialize a proxy? It just needs two simple things. It has one target, what object you want to proxy. So just that is the target. And a handler. And the handler is an object with a set of options that are predefined. There are things like set. A, there's, a, there's a function for set. There's a function for get. There's a function for has, etc. So let's see how uh, you would, uh, what do you say? How would you initialize a proxy and how a proxy will get you the data to it? So let's say I have some, some data here, my, my name and lines of code I committed, 256. Okay, I define my own handlers for this. My first, I have my get handler. Get handler accepts two uh, fields itself, the object itself and the key that I want from the object. So I would say, I would just log, hey, getting key, whatever key I pass from the state from this object and I will return it. It's in, within inside, you can use simple JavaScript. I'm just using your standard object key reference to get it. And similarly, I have a set that requires three things instead of two because you also want to set a value. So you get your object, your key, and what will you to set the key to. And you initialize a proxy over there 
and itself and you give it the give it the data object itself and give it the bunch of handlers that you defined and then if you call if you try to let's say the proxy i try to get name out of it it will actually give me the value that was defined in the object itself so it is actually uh, checking it out but see the these things itself you if you notice these are very uh, ways of accessing which are specific to objects what of what if you wanted to act it to access other built ends there are like a bunch of edge cases that, as well that we have to handle so that is where reflects come in reflect is something that was built hand in hand with proxy what reflect does it it's a, it's a it's a built in that will give you all the methods you need to build a proxy so suddenly let's say you don't have to worry about how do i get this value of a key from a object you just call reflect dot get and it will and you provide it the object and you provide it the key and it will get it for you so reflect is another built in it's full of static methods you can't instantiate it you can't function it you can't construct it so we update our handler with this right the example which we saw before if you see here this is our same example and but instead of writing our own Whereas accessing, you just go reflect dot get, give it the object, give it the key, and it will get you the value. Similarly, for setting, you call reflect dot set uh, date. You give it a, the object, you give it the key, you give it what value to set it to, and it will set it for you. So it basically takes all, away the headache of calculating all the edge cases, anything, anything worrisome around this. Uh, makes it simple. It's a quality of life thing. You you can say. and if you see the general code again uh here uh so the earlier place i was writing my uh, getting my code so reading something here i updated my loc committed lines of code committed to 58 and if i would uh console log it i would get the updated value moving on let's so this was uh, the helper utilities that we are, we are going to use today but now let's let's move on to the problem itself for the activity right so i have some more bunch of data right i have my name again number of lines i added let's say to a commit and number of lines i deleted right this is these are my side effects that i need to handle i need to know what number of lines i added what number of lines i deleted and there is a another uh, side effect called the net change side effect where i need to have the overall change the net change between my line additions and deletions if i would run those functions i would just get simple output like i added 10 lines i added deleted five lines and net change was five right but now i mutated the data i i amended my commit and i set my lines added to 20 what now no updates would happen i would have to call all the functions again to update them so let's let's fix this so uh here i will i'll go again like a, on a bit of tangent uh if you see the first line uh view again is there a bunch of ways to keep so whenever there are side effects you need some way to keep uh, track of those side effects right that you can't just be like hey i like you can't just keep them willy nilly you you need to know in a proper data structure way where where all the side effects are what all properties they are associated to so there are multiple ways for this view does it in a pretty nice way it uses something known as a weak map now uh what you might be thinking you you know what maps are but what are weak maps so weak maps are this very nice data structure that are available in javascript they have a special property where the keys for in in the map are, have always to be objects they can't be any primitive values they have to be objects and the benefit of using a weak map is if the key itself is the the reference to the key is lost right the ref reference doesn't exist anymore the key the what was set as key doesn't exist anymore it will garbage collect the whole thing for you so um, a map wouldn't do that instead if a, if a primitive was set as a key in a map it would still stay over there and this works for values as well if a if a key with the object i uh, had a value or to it gone it would it would remove it it would get garbage collected so let's let's use the weak map right we call our dependency map it's a global uh, uh what do you say instance and we instantiate it a very simple weak map instantiation and 
now we need to do two things, right? We have to track our side effects and we need to trigger them when there are changes. So first of all, let's, let's talk about tracking our side effects. If you see the uh, next function uh, here, you ignore number, line number five where I've talked about dry run and current FN. Basically what it's doing is I have two uh, variables that I'm using to pass the reference of the function and whether it's in test mode or not, like whether that is the side effect I'm running or not. Um, they are just used to pass reference, so you don't have to worry a lot about them. What's important is com comes next. So first I have to check whenever I'm tracking a object, which is data in this case, I need to verify if that object itself exists on my weak map or not. If not, I add it. Now this weak the value of that, uh, this object itself is a map because th this can be a map and need not be a weak map because uh, if, if a data property is there, everything related to it will always be in memory. You will never have properties inside the object that are not uh, like partially available or some parts of it that go away. So this thing we can instantiate as a simple map. Next, coming to next line, line number nine. Uh -huh. I have my object, right? I add it to my weak map, it's the key. I in initialize the normal map as its value. So now I need to see the, the property itself that I'm passing, the prop name. Does that exist? If it doesn't, I need to initialize that as well. That hey, th let's for example, if I, if I give you an example from before, the the weak map object itself would would be uh, just a global object. The sum data that I passed, right? The sum data that I passed, that is the data here, and my prop name is x or name or whatever within that. So I would I would set that and do that. I would map a set. Why a set? You would ask because all side effects should be unique. Right, there shouldn't be duplicate side effects in your chain. So I, I would just check whether the object itself exists, the key within that exists, and if it doesn't exist, I would initialize a set. And finally, the core of task or her function, I would add the side effect to that set so that it starts getting tracked. Yeah, moving on, let's talk about triggers. So we kept, started keeping track of our side effects. Now we need to execute those side effects, right, when, when it's called. So what do we do then? So here we again need the, what object is the side effect on and what key is the side effect on. So we, we need those two things. So we just refer our data dependent map, we get the key, the value of the map against the key, then we get the set against the key in the map, and then we execute all the, side effects because every time uh, something changes, let's say my name changed, everything related to my name should change because it's a, it's a side effect, right? Uh, you, you should, so it's just a simple for each that, that will just execute all, all the functions. Uh, coming back to how I was running this, right? Uh, I, I need a simple observer. This is more of a scaffolding, you can say, where what I need to do is uh, I have my side effects, so I need to start tracking those side effects. What this will basically do is it will uh, it will accept a side effect, a function fn, which which is my side effect. It will just set the reference to the function, execute it, and set it, and move on. Coming back to our handlers, which we talked very initially, how would our handlers look now? Now that we have a track of our side effects, right? Where how would we use our side effects? So what would we what we would do here is if you would have noticed earlier, the side effect itself, both of them, the the track and the trigger properties, they 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 the arguments for them were very similar to how the property the the reflects itself work. So we we would just grab all the arguments that are passed to them, we would uh, track it. So as soon as we track it, whatever data property it was passed to it, it, it was added to the weak map and it was set up for tracking, and then we would do our normal task, which is just asking the reflect to get the value and return it back. Similarly for has as well, we would just again track it because has is also a read option, you check whether a property exists or not. You again add it for tracking and return it. Moving on, talking about rights, how would that differentiate? 
So in, take, in cases of writes, we want to trigger a side effect, right? So what we would do is we would update the value, and as soon as our value is updated, what we would do is we would trigger the chain of side effects that are related to that property. Similarly for delete, again, it's a write, so UI would have to update our side effects need to get triggered. So we, as soon as we delete, we do a call our delete property. As soon as it's deleted, we trigger a, a side effect chain again. So this might look all great and weird and fancy piece of code, but how does it work? Let's see an example. So coming back to our own problem, right? We have uh, some data, my name, line and number of lines added, number of lines deleted. I init instantiated a proxy here. Again, that's mapped to my data object. I declared my side effects, all of them, addition, deletion, and my net change. Now, what I would do instead of just execute the functions, I would queue them up for observation. As soon as I queue them up for observation, they would uh, the read side effect would get triggered because it's part of a proxy. So they would be like, hey, you tried to read this, you tried to read that, you tried to read uh, the net change. Because if you remember correctly, within the observe function, we were executing the function that was passed to it. So it executed all of them, and there was a read action. So in our console, we would automatically see, hey, additions equal 10 got printed, deletions equal 5 got printed, net change equal 5 got printed, right? And then let's mutate the data. Here, what would happen, as soon as we mutate the data, we set it to 20, what it would do is uh, the proxy a handler for, for line additions would get created, which was set up when we created the proxy. And it would see that, hey, my number of additions got changed. So it would trigger the dependency on additions. I would log additions for 20. But wait, there is more. The net change was also dependent on my line of number of lines I added. So it would trigger that as well, and it would get night changes equal to 50, automatically logged to the console. That was a very simple reactive system built using proxies and reflect. Uh, if this was your first time like seeing those things, I, I know it might have become a bit confusing for you. So yeah, any questions? The benefit to weak maps is that the, it allows parts of it to be garbage collected as soon as they are not needed any, anymore. When we are talking about the map inside, the, as long as the parent object itself exists, all the properties within it will exist. So that map is necessary. Like it, it will, if a part, there won't be a condition where a part of that object goes. It, it, the whole thing will always stay. So uh, if I talk about this, this example here, uh, there's no case where the values within name partly disappear. That, that will always stay. And, and another thing I would like to add here is that the, if you noticed initially, uh, there's also a fall drawback to this implementation where if you notice initially there were two methods, right? There was a getter setter method and the proxy method. So the drawback of proxy method is because it's a weak map and a map inside, if you get a return and you destructure something out of it, it will lose that reference and it won't stay reactive anymore. You have to pass the whole reference in together if you want it to be active. If you destructure something out of the map, it's gone. The reactivity is gone. And that is the case where you would prefer refs, which use the get, get a setter method uh, to continue to like, make it deeply reactive. Cool, okay. Thank you, everyone.